sometimes you want to say something and then because of the turmoil, emotional turmoil, psychological turmoil, social turmoil that you are going through, you get very confused. Um, um, as I said, my name is Gerisho Majanja and David was my first born child. The one who made me um, initially to be very excited, very happy, um, and it was a fulfillment of my dream. Um, unfortunately, his mother died like 30 years ago, and then I had to raise the children. Um, all the same, David was a very healthy man, young man. I have not had to carry David to a hospital for any illness as he was growing up. David was a charming, playful child. David was imbued with the spirit of competitiveness even at the young age. He was inquisitive. He had all the qualities of a wonderful child. I was proud of him as he came up and so on. Um, I keep telling people that he replaced or took over what I personally wanted to be. And I grew up high school, A level, what have you. I just never thought of any other career as a judge I wanted to be. But perhaps God knew that that was not my place and God knew that there will be a judge in the family. When I went to, when I was chosen to go for law degree in Dar es Salaam, I would have been a classmate of Justice Mwera. But I fell ill for five months. By the time I came out, one semester had gone, so I couldn't. And then uh, I reapplied. Now Nairobi University had a law faculty, so I applied them. But they decided that I didn't deserve to go to the school of law. But they pushed me in the one they said, bachelor of anything. And um, so I got into there and I chose one of those anythings. I, it turned out to be rewarding. I did very well, and it, that anything that I chose became my life over the years. That is, I studied economics and statistics, and I was happy, but my son went through, and apparently, again, he was actually he was admitted to the School of Medicine. And he went to a place they, they called the sick cadavers, was it? In the medical school. <laughs> he ran away. <laughs> and went to the school of uh, law, and um, there he was. So, I can talk about life at home. I can tell you that he was a brilliant boy, he was very competitive very competitive, David never accepted to be behind somebody. He, needed, he wanted always to be in front. And again, I was 
was uh, very studious. I was the kind of person who read everything that I saw in front of me. David took after that, and he, a lot of the knowledge he had in the family was from the, that role. So we had an early life together, which uh, was rewarding. Um, you have seen him in the career performance of work, what have you. I just saw the bottom ends or the top ends of the career at home. But I want to confess that the one thing that really worried me was that this guy could easily suffer from a heart attack. He worked on and on, even at home, never rested. Never, you know, I, I, I have the opportunity to live with him on many occasions in Nairobi. And I was saying, well, they need a break. So that is what worried me. But what happened to him had very little to do with my worry. And you, the professionals, have talked about what you know about him. And uh, I won't stack that, you know, that may I talk about. So he was very helpful to us, me, uh, brothers, and everybody. I have David's, what you would call stepmama, but the mama. Um, unfortunately, he suffers from a very complex disease called lupus. And one of the issues that she gets into, to, if she is very active for two, three days and so on, I'm always sure I should be down for another three or four days. And this is the season. Because from Nairobi and all the activities we have had, she's struggling to try and come. If she comes, I'll introduce her to you. She has lived very well, and David was very generous to all of us. And he took care of us. We and her do not enjoy good health. And he was really the person who took care of us all the time. We have had to be airlifted from here to Nairobi, to hospitals and so on. We have had to be taken to India, places like that, and at his expense. We, I think we, we, we are concerned that should we continue that direction without him, our days on earth are completely num numbered. And we lost real support, real support of a son, brilliant, helpful, kind, not only to us, but also to this, uh, the other sisters and brothers. Um, you all know that that is not uh, that he decided that the best way to dispose of his body is by cremation. So we obeyed that, and we decided that because we have so many relatives, even if they didn't see him, would like to attend a, a service in his own. So he was cremated. We did the service in Nairobi. And this is the second service for those who, can, who could not make it to Nairobi. And I'm very grateful for all of you who turned up to grace this day to help us and see us through. And there will be a small private function following this at the house, which is strictly family and a few friends. So when, we, when the service is completed, those involved will go to the compound and do it not. So really, as I said, I don't know, confused, psychologically, mentally, and uh, virtually um, disoriented. 
I, I don't know what to say. All I can just say is, thank you, David, for having been our great son. Thank you, all of you who came and cheered us on. Thank you, members of the church, uh, judiciary. Thank you, my school, primary school, for hosting us, and everybody that has made this day a success. May David soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. Be blessed. Thank you, Elder Gerson Majanjo. We shall pray that you continue standing strong even during this time of the demise of your lovely son. Now, allow me to usher in.